Hello and welcome back to yet another Mac Deck Tech. Today we have another custom build for you featuring the Jelly Balloon Man from Dustmorn. As always, if you feel like you're getting some value out of these deck techs, please like, comment, subscribe, do all the algorithm things to help grow this channel. The Jelly Balloon Man. Three mana, Boros Commander. It's like, Mech, you just did a Boros Commander. I know, but they're both good. Uh, so let's go over what he does. So as I said, three mana, Hasty, one four, Human Clown. So for one attack, you get to create a copy of another creature you control, except that copy is a 1-1 one, one balloon that flies in addition to its other types. Uh, and then you get to sack that balloon at the end step. So these balloons aren't here to last, they're going to blow up, but that's okay. So what is our game plan? Well, the game plan is to abuse ETB effects, as well as really just like a few other types of things. Uh, we're still going for some protection. We really want to take advantage of the fact that we're having at least one creature enter basically every turn, ideally more, but uh, let's get into it, shall we? Let's start off with those enter the battlefield and leave the battlefield triggers. We're going to start off with the Agate Instigator. So two mana, one three. We could offspring it for another one in the red, creating another one one copy of them. But hey, whenever our creature enters the battlefield, we're going to deal one damage to each opponent. This is super strong. It's a great turn two play for us, leading into our commander on turn three. And honestly, uh, you know, we're passing out damage. It's a little incidental. Uh, we do have a couple other iterations of this, so to speak, in the deck, which we'll get to in a little bit. But I think it's pretty solid. Ale, the Dawn Sky. I'm probably mispronouncing that. I do apologize for those that know how to pronounce it. But this is a five cost mono white dragon. Uh, so it's a 5-4 flying with Vigilance. When it dies, we get to choose one, which is why we like them. So the balloon copies that we make aren't sticking around. White the Legend roll is going to, you know, kind of fuck us there. But the fact that we're sacrificing them to the Legend roll is going to get their ability to trigger immediately. So we could look at the top seven of our library, put any number of non-land permanents with total mana value four or less among them onto the battlefield, rest at the bottom. Pretty good, right? We're going to kind of flood our field pretty quickly. Or we could put two plus one plus one counters on each permanent we control that is a creature or vehicle. So we're buffing our whole field. Uh, the Dawn Sky is super budget, sitting around like the two to three dollar mark. So I think they're a pretty great addition here. Sticking with those dragon spirits, we have Atsushi, the Blazing Sky. So this is a mono red dragon spirit. Four mana, four, four, flying trample. Whenever they die, we get to exile the top two, and we can play those until the end of our next turn, or we can create three treasures. Both effects are good. You know, I'm happy for either of them. Eowyn, Fearless Knight. So Eowyn is a four cost, three, four, Boros, Legendary Human Knight. It's like, Max, should you have all these legendaries? And it's like, listen, I get it. Legendaries definitely aren't as beneficial, I suppose, in the long term as non-legendaries. But the, the non-legendaries are 1-1 one, one balloons. So I don't think that it, like we're missing out on a ton. And I think the effects more than make up for it. Getting back to Eowyn, they have haste that 3-4. When they enter, we get to exile a creature and opponent controls with greater power. So greater than 3, you know, probably a decent hit. Greater than 1 basically anything, right? And all of our legendary creatures are going to gain protection from any of the colors that that creature was. So, repeated removal, repeated protection, we're kind of here for it. Fanatic of Mogus. So, mono red, four cost, four two, when it enters the battlefield, it's going to deal damage to each opponent equal to our devotion to red. So, at a minimum, this is going to be three damage, uh, at least for the balloon copy. Uh, with just the Fanatic themselves, you know, it's two damage. But, you know, with more and more red permanents out on our field, that damage is just going to climb higher and higher. Can't sing the praises of this next one enough, and that's the Imperial Recruiter. So three mana, one one, enters the battlefield. We get to look for a creature with power two or less, Revealed and add it to our hand. Uh, we have a ton of good targets for that. So this is basically a repeatable tutor for us. It is on the more expensive side of cards in the deck, sitting around like the eight to nine dollar range in general. But, you know, tutors be good. Karmic Guide. So Karmic Guide is actually a, you know, 
perfectly good example of something we could tutor up. They are mono white, they are a 2-2 for 5 mana, so that, that value is not great. But they have flying and protection from black, which could be relevant. Uh, they also have echo, so if they came in from our previous turn, we do have to pay for them on the following turn. But when they enter, we get to return a creature from the graveyard to battlefield. There's a lot of value to be found here. Loran of the Third Path. So Loran is mono white, so they are a 2-1 for 3. They have Vigilance, they let us and an opponent draw a card, which is kind of fine, right? If someone else is behind, right, we could wheel and deal, you know, the cards we're passing out here. But whenever they enter the battlefield, we get to destroy an artifact or enchantment. Molten Gatekeeper. So Molten Gatekeeper is a 2-3 three for 3. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under our control, we're going to deal one damage to each opponent. So by creating a balloon copy of them, we are going to deal, you know, effectively two damage for each other creature we have coming in. We also are running the Recruiter of the Guard, so effectively the same exact thing as the Imperial Recruiter, only it's toughness based, but most of our creatures that we care about tutoring up with the Imperial Recruiter are going to be recruited by the Recruiter of the Guard as well. Rumor Gatherer, they are a 2-1 for 3 mana, they have Alliance, so whenever a creature enters the battlefield under our control, if it's the second time it happened, we're going to draw a card. Otherwise, we are basically just scrying one. So card selection, a little bit of card draw. We're kind of here for it. I normally don't include sad robots in places, but I think sad robot has a place here. And that's because if we create a token copy of them, that's a balloon that we have to sack at the end step. You know, we have repeated ramp. We have repeated card draw. I think they have some value here. Spirited Companion. So Spirited Companion is a 1-1 one, one for 2. Whenever they enter, we're going to draw a card. Uh, so really, right, we're just trying to keep our hand full. We're really digging for some nasty little combos, which we'll get to at the end of the video. Split Skin Doll. So Split Skin Doll is basically just another Spirited Companion for us. They are a 2-1 for 2. Whenever they enter, we're going to draw a card. Then we have to discard a card unless we have a creature with power 2 or less outside of the split skin doll. Uh, but we almost always will, especially if we're creating, like, balloon copies of them. Right? Keeping that hand full. You know them. You love them. It's the Sun Titan. Uh, so a Vigilant 6-6 six, six for 6. Whenever they ETB, we are going to return a permanent with mana value 3 or less from Grave back to the field. Uh, so we could do this with ramp. We could do this with any kind of like powerful artifacts. Uh, but most of our creatures, you know, kind of fall into this category. So I think we're pretty good here. Village Bellringer. So Village Bellringer is actually kind of crazy good. Um, they are a flashable 1-4 for 3. Whenever they enter, we're going to untap all of our creatures. And, you know... I know that the Bloom Man's ability costs one to activate, but, you know, a few things that are pinging each opponent for every time we have a creature enter, and this kind of doesn't quite go infinite unless we have infinite mana, but it's still pretty, pretty strong. Wall of Omens. So Wall of Omens is just more card draw. You know, did I go overboard on the card draw in this deck? Mayhaps. Um, but a 0-4 defender is still pretty decent, right? It's a little harder to get into us in, like, early to mid-game. I think they're going to last a while. You guessed it. It's more card draw with the Welcoming Vampire. So a 2-3 three for 3. They are a flyer. Whenever a creature enters about a field with power 2 or less, we're going to draw a card. It only triggers once a turn. But I think that's okay. Witty Roastmaster. 3-2 three, for 3. Uh, whenever another creature enters about a field under control, we're going to have the Roastmaster deal 1 damage to each opponent. So that's the third instance of that we have on a creature body. There's more of them to come. Worm Coil Engine is phenomenal here. Again, a little on the expensive side, right? I tend to try and cap these out around like the $10 mark. This is sitting slightly over $10 on TCG, up to like $13 everywhere else. But the fact that whenever they die, they're going to leave behind two halves of a Worm Coil Engine, and we could do this every turn. You know, I think the death touch and lifelink we're getting from it, you know, kind of justifies that price point. Last up is Zealous Conscripts. So, Hasty, 3-3 three, three for 5. Whenever it enters, we're going to steal a thing. We're going to untap that thing. It's going to gain haste. 
We'll only have it until the end of the turn, but until the end of the turn is all we need. We're also moving down into our enchantments, so we're skipping over quite a few steps, but that's okay. We have the impact tremors. So two mana, creature enters, we're dealing one damage to each opponent. As well as the War Leader's Call, which gives all of our creatures plus one, plus one, so a little relevant. And whenever a creature enters under our control, we're going to deal one to each opponent. Sliding back ever so slightly, we're also running Tokusai's Welcome. So three mana, creature enters with three mana value or less. We're going to go ahead and draw a card. Triggers only once a turn, but we really want to keep our hand full, right? We're digging for combo pieces in this deck. Let's move into general token support. Uh, so we're going to start off with the intangible virtue. All of our creature tokens are going to have plus one, plus one vigilance. Pretty nice. Inspiring leader is going to give the, all of them plus two, plus two, as long as we have our commander in the field. So, you know, one, one flyer every turn is fine. Three, three flyer every turn is kind of potentially deadly, especially if we're rocking those village bell ringers. Echoing Assault. So five mana, creature tokens we control have menace, which is nice. And whenever we attack, we get to choose a non-token creature attacking. Create a 1-1 one, one copy of it that's tapped and attacking that is also forced to be sacked at our end step. But, you know, we're generating more tokens. We're giving all of our tokens menace. Like, we're, we're really providing value for our tokens here. Following that up, this isn't so much token support directly, but, you know, for the purposes of our deck, I think it is. And that's Sundial of the Infinite. Also a little on the pricier side, right? We're sitting at like 9 to 12 bucks, depending on where you're picking it up from. But it's a two-mana artifact. For one to tap, we get to end the turn immediately. So we would do so with all of the sacrifice, these tokens on your end step triggers on the stack. Basically letting us keep these tokens permanently and really amassing some big value. Staff of the Storyteller. So Staff sits around like the $2 mark, it's two mana. Whenever it enters, we're gonna go ahead and create a spirit, and whenever we create one or more tokens, specifically creature tokens, we get to put a story counter on it, then for one in a town, we can remove a counter to draw a card. So just more card draw. Of course, we're running Skull Clamp, right? These balloons are one ones by default. So may as well sack them for card draw. Skipped over it earlier, we're going to just touch on it right now real quick, and that's Panharmonicon, right? We're doubling up all of our ETB effects. Idol of Oblivion, so you guessed it, it's more card draw. I really feel like maybe I went overboard, but again, we are digging for combos, so I think it's okay. Rootborn Defenses, so we're going to populate, and more importantly, you know, kind of make our board indestructible for the turn. All right, we have a couple other things that don't really quite fall into those categories. Some of them are just like redundancy. Some of them are going to be untappers. Uh, but those categories are small enough that I don't feel like they deserve a whole spot in the video. So I'm just going to go over them kind of individually. We're just going to call this section like good stuff, right? Um, Agros costs Eternal Soldier. So four mana, three, four, mono white has Vigilance, which is fine. Whenever they become the target of an ability that targets only them, we could pay one and a hybrid Boros, so either white or red, and copy that ability for everything that is a legal target of that ability. And my God, does that work stupid well with the Balloon Man? It's like, yeah, I'll pay three mana, create a token copy of literally every creature on my board. Yes. Yes, I will. Thank you. Eartha Joe Frontier Mentor. So they actually do have an ETB trigger that we skipped over earlier, uh, which creates us a 1-1 one, one red mercenary with tap and give a target creature plus one plus O. Oh. We can only do so at sorcery speed, but with our balloons, once we have enough of them, you know, we get to really kind of boost them high, throw them into somebody and watch them die. More importantly, though, whenever we activate an ability that targets a creature or a player, we're going to copy that ability and we can choose new targets for the copy. We're running Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker. Um, so Kiki Jiki is effectively our commander, only they don't cost anything, which means they do, in fact, go infinite with the village bell ringer. Um, and really just, you know, a number of other good things in the deck. 
Marvin Murderous Mimic. So a 2-2 two, two for 2 has all the activated abilities of creatures we control that don't have the same name. So they could be another Kiki Jiki effect. They could be another Balloon Man effect. You know, we don't have a ton of, like, kind of activated abilities, but the ones we do have in the Command Zone and just in the 99 are all worth having extra copies of. Illusionist Bracers. So... Equipment for two, three to equip. Whenever the ability of an equipped creature is activated, if it's not a mana ability, we get to copy it. So, you know, one mana, tap, create two things. Mage Right Stone. So, two mana, artifact, one and tap it to untap. Ideally, our commander or Kiki Jiki, but either way, it's pretty strong. Partitioner's Seal, three cost mana rock, which I don't generally like, but we can pay the one to tap it to untap our commander, or again, Kiki Jiki. But guys, that's the deck. Uh, there are obviously a handful of cards that I didn't go over that are just general good stuff. Uh, there's a lot of ways we could build the Balloon Man. Uh, I've seen someone build it as an arc bound deck, and my goodness was attempting to make that deck for the deck tech, but it wasn't really my original idea, so I didn't want to feel like I was stealing it. Um, but if you enjoyed the deck, you know, definitely give me a like, a comment, a subscribe, ring the bell to ensure that you never miss an episode. Uh, there's a link to the full deck list in the description, as always. Uh, there's also a link to the Discord, so it's kind of small right now. We are trying to grow our membership. You know, you'll get to chat with me, uh, other nerds talk about magic, you know, video games, board games, you name it. Uh, but until next time, I'm Mechanized Minion, the Energy King, wishing you good luck with your builds.